What's up guys, kooks and groms alike. This is uh, Board Garage and we will be doing a little uh, quiver walkthrough today for you guys. In front of us today is a Hanson 5050 that has been in our family for what? 60 years, 70 years now? Uh, yeah, 43 years. And this is my grandfather's board. He bought it super long time ago. 53 years ago. 53 years ago, good math. Coat, glossed it over, did all the ding repairs. It's gonna be an heirloom in this family for generations to come. Uh, you wanna give some details on this board? So this is my father-in-law's 1967 Hanson 50-50 pintail, or as it was referred to as the pointed tail, um, vocabulary of the time. Um, this actually sat in the dirt behind my father-in-law's house for the first 10 years of my marriage and I never looked at it. And when I finally scratched through the wax and the dirt, the first thing that came through was 50-50 and then realized what I had Holy been missing. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, what I, I had been missing. Um, at some point in time in the mid-80s, my brother-in-law had put a modern fin in the bolt-through box and poured resin in it. Um, so we had to dremel out the box and put a modern box, a modern vein box in. Um, and you see the Futures Old Salty pivot fin, which by and large is kind of similar to uh, the old 5050 uh, pivot fin. But outside of that, the only thing we did was make it watertight, uh, put a quick gloss coat on it to make sure that everything uh, was sealed. and. That is, um, you know, pretty much a planked out, thick, flat, 50-50. I mean, you can see it. Absolutely no rocker. The board doesn't turn. It's a freaking boat. It, uh, it weighs probably upwards of, I don't know, 35 pounds. It, at, like, absolutely. can barely fit under your arm. It's probably almost 24 it's inches wide, right? It's a full 24 right? wide. Yeah. <laughs> it is a full 24 wide. And um, thick, so yeah. <laughs> you have to take your gloves off if you're going to carry it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's the start of this quiver. In the same vein of classic Hanson surfboards, this is the second Hanson 50 we 50 50 we own. Little bit different than the first one. This is more of a of a rider, not so piggy. You can actually turn this board, which is uh, helpful. Uh, still just as heavy, may I add, but uh, this board's a little bit more fun. It's a little bit more of a rider. So this is actually the same exact year, 1967, Hanson 5050 50 pointed well. tail. Uh, but you could see the difference that 12 months made. Um, this a little bit board, more rocker. A lot more rocker, yeah. um, especially uh, on the entry rocker. Mm. Um, you have... Uh, 23 and 3 eighths width as opposed to 24 so they pulled it in made it a little bit more narrow a little bit more speedy um, but it is super foiled in comparison to the other board um, just a lot more lively uh, a lot more responsive you have the, uh, the change from the pivot fin to a more rakey uh, more modern you know greeno type style fin allowing the board to turn um, the difference in that rocker, the kick tail, um, and the fin really makes a difference in its ability to ride. Um, carries a lot of width through it though, so it's still, you know, that traditional nose rider. So kind of best of both worlds. Um, right at the verge of long boards going from, you know, strictly nose riders, you know, one line, one track, to trying to break free and, and make some turns on the wave. Um, a little Mickey door, a little two-step kind of action. Yeah, yeah, you know, getting that, uh, all the way to the front of the board and then all the way back again. And with a little, with a little stall, a little. <laughs> uh, it's not even a turn. That's not a turn. But that was that was the beginning of this era. Would you say that was the beginning of the little uh, cut stall turn? Yeah, yeah, a little stall stop. <laughs> and um, you could see where this board really went right into the next um, phase, which was the super light. Um, also, a, a pointed tail, uh, what we would refer to as a round pin today, but um, that board was made for exactly one year and put, before it all went short after that. And what is, what's the size difference on this one compared to the last one? They're exactly the same. They're 9.5s. They right? 
That's two nine fives, both from 1968, 12, 12 months apart, com two completely different boards. It's just a testament to how broken and how like not real or legitimized the surfing industry of this day truly was. Just so much, there's so much experimentation. No one really knew what was going on, but there was, people were trying everything. And this is a testament to that. It definitely shows how quick the evolution of surfing moved during those days. Yeah, and the, just the radical exploration that they were doing. Um, I saw a, another manufacturer, a um, Yater from 1961, that had an offset fin on a Yater spoon so that they could turn at Rincon faster. And it looked like the fin had been knocked off and then just put on poorly. <laughs> but literally, they offset it one the inch. The first ASIMs, the first, they thought they were super, like, next super level NASA type shit. Super evolved, yeah, yeah 1961 yeah, no. evolution. <laughs> um, but yeah, once again, just people trying to find better ways to ride waves and, you know, trying to pull out all the stops. But I think these two boards, my, my father-in-law's Hanson and this Hanson, really demonstrate, you know, where forward thinking was going at the time. It's, it's kind of a cool thing to ride both boards in the same session and, and really get a feel for, you know, where these guys were going. Even more so the fact that there is an entire separate piece of the board that's not directly from this board, right? This is a, this is a little Frankenstein of a board. So yeah, from right here, back, the entire, it's a double, uh, two one-inch balsas that had to be cut out and then replaced with modern balsa, reshaped, re-glassed, and um, you know, polished out again. Um, and we have a, a wonderful, craftsman here on the East Coast down in Delaware that did all this work and restored this. You know, you think about this board being 50 plus years old and now it's ready to surf for another 50 years and, you know, just... Uh, it's pretty gnarly. Pretty yeah, epic. Definitely a, a time machine. Rounding out the uh, triplets of Hansons that we have, this is the, the actual modern one, the only one that was produced in the 21st century. Um, it's a beautiful board. This is probably one of my favorite boards that we have, especially a traditional nose rider. Uh, we'll get into the rest of the boards later, but I mean, the glass on pivot, it's just the red, white, and blue. It just is such a cool board. There's so many little details that are so special about it that that heart back to the old boards, but have such a, the, this board has such a, a modern flair on the, uh, on the traditional nose rider. I think it also definitely falls in between in the sense that uh, you could definitely turn this board a little bit more. Um, there is rocker in this board uh, opposed to the first the first Hanson, the family heirloom. Uh, that being said, it's still damn flat. It's still really heavy. What is it, 10 ounce Volan? And I mean, She's still a pig. She's still a traditional nose rider, but this is one of my favorite boards that we have. It's beautiful, epic board. So Craig Hollingsworth, that's doing these boards for Hanson right now, when I spoke to him about making this board, I asked for the, uh, the OG template, the original 24-inch wide template, and he said, why in the hell would you <laughs> want to do that? How are you going to even carry it? I said, I'm not really worried about carrying it. I want to ride it. Um, and he said, you know, they were very difficult to get the blanks for. And if you notice a lot of old vintage 50, 50s, a lot of them have double stringers. And a lot of them are offset double stringers. And he explained the reason for that. I never verified it. But the story I got was that the blanks were so inconsistent. A lot of the times they had to put offset stringers to add width to it because they were never guaranteed to get a full 24 inch blank. Going back to the point that the surf industry during that early time or the late 60s was just, there was no real, no one was really making money. It was so all over the place. The surfing industry that we have today makes the old, like old school surf industry look like 
farm work. It like, was it's in not, infancy. Yeah, <laughs> literally. But you think about like the first foam blanks being produced in 1959, <laughs> right? So this is eight years later. This is, you know, brand new space age technology foam and fiberglass. Um, but so yeah, so we kept it as a, you know, double stick offset stringers. Um, full 24 inches wide. The original 67 thin template, but we wanted to give it some modern sensibilities. So we pushed it up six and a half inches from the tail to allow the, the board to break free. And the board really does turn. Um, a buddy of mine, local guy that I surf with, has the exact same original board, a 67, um, with a glass on fin, you know, and it kind of overhangs the tail by two inches. Um, and his is a much better nose rider, but it's literally one track, um, where this board nose rides almost as well. Um, but it, it is a lot faster, a lot freer. Um, it's just a fun board to ride. The, the, and this, I think, this board out of the Hansons is like, it's a real rider. You can like, obviously, pivot fin, so it's still the same kind of stall and kind of checky kind of turn, but um, it moves. It moves under your feet. You can actually, uh, you can surf this board, you know, and, and there, um, I don't know. It's just, it's a lot of fun. It definitely is a reminder of how far things have kind of, especially with, we have like more modern longboards that we'll get into later, but um, you can definitely just see the development and there's so many little caveats of this board that make it so special, especially how, this is what, nine, five? This is a nine two. This is nine two. Nine two and it's a square tail. Um, thanks, Chris, for the advice on the 9-2. We, we uh, duplicated his board, his length. Um, he said that's all we really needed for it, and after riding his board, uh, I agreed with him, and the order, the order went in, and uh, this is my 9-2, 50-50. And there's definitely still enough foam.